The interstate system was created in 1956. From there, a map of routes extended across the country was created and constructed. Some of these highways were completed immediately after, with some taking multiple decades to be built. After the original interstate system was finally completed, though, highways continued to be built to interstate standards and passed into the system. To this day, there are planned interstate routes and ones currently under construction. One of these highways is Interstate 14, a highway that is currently just 25 miles long. So today we're going to talk about the history of the highway, but especially the future plan to extend it across the southern United States. Before the video starts though, please consider subscribing to the channel. We make content like this every single week, so if that's the kind of thing you enjoy, click the subscribe button below, because it helps me out a lot. Thank you! So let's start with what the highway is currently. So I-14 is located in central Texas in the Killeen area. On the east end, it extends from I-35 in Belton and works its way towards the Killeen area as the only divided highway connector between the Temple and Killeen metropolitan areas. From there, it travels through the eastern suburbs of Nolanville and Harker Heights before crossing the city lines into Killeen. There, it passes around one and a half miles south and southwest of the downtown. After the downtown, it then passes Fort Hood, which is now called Fort Cavazos as of May 9th, 2023. A very recent change that I didn't know about until researching for this video. Finally, after it passes the army base, it reaches its western terminus at an interchange with Business 190 and State Route 9. So that's the current route it takes, traveling 25 miles mainly through the Killeen metropolitan area. Now sure, it mainly serves the city of Killeen, but you have to be aware that Fort Hood has a population around 53,000. So having this connection to the interstate system is incredibly important. So back in 2005, the highway was proposed as the 14th Amendment Highway, without a number designation. Traveling from Natchez, Mississippi, through the state, as well as Alabama, before ending just over the border in Augusta, Georgia. Being in the south and traveling through the Black Belt of the U.S., the 14th Amendment name was used to honor the 14th Amendment, passed in the Reconstruction Era after the Civil War, to address citizenship rights and equal protection under the law, among other things. Later on, a suggestion was made to extend the highway to instead travel from Austin, Texas to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Still in 2005, an act was passed that approved the 14th Amendment, as well as the 3rd Infantry Division highways. The problem there was that funding was not provided for either highway, which ends up obviously being a problem. So slowly but surely, the concept of this highway continued through active studies that have taken place up to present day. Now, going to 2012, the Federal Highway Administration issued its report on the 14th Amendment Highway and made the recommendation for further environmental and feasibility substudies. But those studies obviously needed funding, and there was a little action to do so after 2011. Finally, in 2015, a more detailed design was introduced that would officially create I-14. Generally following the US 190 route in Texas, which was approved later that year. Signs began to be put up as early as 2017 in Killeen. From there, construction stopped and it would need something else to continue. Now, coming to pretty much modern times, let's see what's going on. In 2021, Senators Ted Cruz of Texas and Raphael Warnock of Georgia introduced a plan to designate a corridor for I-14 that would connect their two states. This was signed by the President on November 15, 2021. The plan is to extend the highway from the Midland-Odessa area all the way to Augusta, Georgia, through all of eastern Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. Now, this highway had one major thing that made it more appealing to politicians, and that's its connection to military bases. We already talked about Fort Hood, but the planned route will also connect to Goodfellow Air Force Base in Texas, Fort Polk in Camp Beauregard in Louisiana, Fort Benning, Robbins Air Force Base, and Fort Gordon in Georgia. If you were following along, that's eight military installations that would be connected by the route. Now, I don't talk about it a ton, but obviously the interstate system was created with military transportation in mind, more so than civilian transportation. It's just how it turned out. In fact, the official name is Dwight D. Eisenhower System of Interstate and Defense Highways. So with all that said, using this highway to connect southern military bases is a great way to get it approved and funded. Now, obviously the idea has been stagnant for a long time now. But with the passing of the IIJA, things seem to finally be getting off the ground with this project. First of all, I-14 is set to be expanded from four lanes to six lanes in Harker Heights, an $81 million project that is now over halfway done. The Texas DOT is currently in planning stages for the actual construction of the rest of I-14 in the state. An extension to Temple is set to begin in 2027, which would be a good start. In the western part of the state, things seem especially complicated. 
Work on I-14 is expected to require around 260 different roadway projects, including 32 bridges, 2 interchanges, 89 miles of added capacity, 136 miles of rehabilitated roadway, and 66 miles of new roadway. That's an incredibly complicated thing to accomplish, and currently planning is set to be completed in February 2024 that would give us a design, with work on the system expected to continue for at least a decade after that. Texas's DOT feasibility study on the rest of I-14 in the state started back in fall of 2021. This isn't a small state, and with over 500 miles of interstate set to be built in the state, this planning stage is expected to take seven years to complete, which would put us at early 2028 just for this stage of the project to be completed in Texas. In Georgia, cities like Columbus are still currently collecting data and simply looking into what this project would entail. As I mentioned, the bill only designated the route, but didn't provide any federal funds, which is still what they need. States like Alabama and Mississippi are still slower to start work on this highway. That simply doesn't concern them as much. So yet again, things still look to be stagnant for I-14. So how much will this project cost in the end? That's a question I've been trying to figure out for a while now. With how early this is in planning and everything else, we don't have an actual answer to that question because nobody knows the exact route and all the changes that it will require yet. But what we can do is look at I-69, another major interstate that's further along, and see its costs. Right now, on the completed portions of that highway, the current total cost is estimated to be around $40 billion. Now, with half of this project completed, we can say that it could be anywhere from $60 to $100 billion. The total distance of this project will be around 1,800 miles. So now if we go back to our project, it'll be around 1,500 miles, which puts it relatively similar. For the sake of not being wrong and not putting a ton of effort into all the details of costs, I'd say the project is likely to cost over $50 billion throughout the route. So will Interstate 14 ever actually be completed? The idea was introduced all the way back in 2005, and all they have to show for it so far is 25 miles out of the planned 1,500. Problems with funding and overall distaste towards freeways as a whole has made it difficult to progress and get going on this extremely extensive plan. If Interstate 14 ever does get built, it won't be within the next decade or even next two decades. There's too much going on, and states like Mississippi and Alabama have barely even started doing anything to make it happen. You have to remember how difficult freeways are to plan and build. This is not light work, and just planning it can take up to a decade. If it weren't for the already completed portion in Texas, I wouldn't be ready to say the project will ever get done. There's a very real possibility they give up on it and I-14 ends up being shorter than the fully planned route. So that's basically all you need to know about Interstate 14 right now. If anything major happens, I'm sure I'll mention it on the channel in 10 years from now. But for now, thanks for watching. Thanks to the members this week, Rosebud4, Pull Pots Pie Hole, KMS162, Jeremy Jarvis, Haystack, Benjamin Whiting, Ryan Devins, Boss King Inc., Blang, Christopher DeAngelis, JL, Darkburn, Elijah Pass, Big Passy, Jeremy Crone, Wolflink73, Snyder Swine, Florida Jake, Stormy Knight, Nikita Martinoff, Benjamin Whiting, Ryan Devins, Hazev the Wolf, Dominic Psyche, and Bryson. I appreciate you all so much. You really help out the channel. If you want to become a member, the link is down in the description below. It just helps out the channel and me as a person. So if you appreciate the content and you just want to give some money to me, it all goes straight into my savings, so you're not giving it to a bad cause, you're just helping out me if you appreciate the videos. Thank you.